one second. It looks like it's preparing. I don't want us to. It may be live. Hang on one sec. <laughs> See, we have two attendees. So just so you know, Caitlin, Will Katie Williams is attending and Ted Duncan, thanks for joining in. Yeah. We are um, going live on Facebook now. Um, and just a reminder that this call will be recorded, this Zoom will be recorded. So don't say anything you don't want permanently out there. Hmm, it's taking a second. You just let me know when, let me know when we're ready. That's not my internet. Oh, it's trying. Katie, we could probably go ahead and start and all um, okay. Okay. because we can always share it later on Facebook. Okay, great. Too. So if it's not happening to go live, we can share it later too. So. All, right, awesome. all right, super. I'm going to. All righty. I'm going to, I'm going to go. Uh, good evening, neighbors. My name is Katie Ban. I am the president of the Windsor Forest Community Association, and I am happy to welcome you to our May meeting. We're doing it a different, a little different here, but um, we're excited for everybody who is joining us and also watching from home, uh, so you can stay abreast at what the Windsor Forest Community Association had to oh, offer. Um, it's just me here with you this evening, but I want to take a quick or moment to introduce our board. We've got your vice president, Andy Blair, your treasurer, Jenny McCord, and your secretary, Derek Williams. And then we also have our communications chair, Kate Blair, who is helping out with this Zoom call this evening. So we really appreciate all of her technological expertise in making this possible for everybody. Um, Without further ado, I would like to call this meeting to order, so I'm going to do so since we don't have um, a live audience to second that. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with our financial report uh, review. So if I could get that pulled up here on the screen to share. We are doing quite well, just so everybody knows we have got growing membership, which has been very, very exciting. Um, I'm going to touch upon this in a little while, but we've got our food, Windsor Forest food truck um, event that has been going on for the past couple of months, and that's been helping just to drive recognition of the community association um, and has caused our membership to grow as a result of that. So we're very, very grateful for that, um, as well as all the donations that everybody has all the donations that they're providing. So, you have the financial report to pull up, Kate? I'm having technical difficulties as soon as we went live, um, but it is on the um, website, uh, arwindsorforest.com. Perfect. So, we, if, um, if we're not able to get that up here, that's fine. You can go to ourwindsorforest.com and the uh, most updated financial report is available there. And truly, we don't have um, any expenses. All of our expenses have actually been the purchasing of meals for our frontline workers um, that have come from the donations that we've brought in. So our revenues have been 
membership as well as those donation gifts, but please know that all the donation gifts are then going out again to the various food trucks to provide these meals for workers. Um, so that will be available for anybody to take a look at, but things are looking good financially, I would say. Um, we've got our member update. As of right now, as of today, we have 68 members of the Windsor Forest Community community association. So we cannot thank the people who have become members enough. We truly appreciate your, um, your support, your financial support, your, um, your volunteer support, just your support in general. We could not do this without you. So thank you so much for purchasing those mem memberships um, and continuing to support the Windsor Forest Community Association. Um, I did receive an email from Officer Trago, who is our uh, code compliance representative, and he just wanted to remind everybody that Recorder's Court is currently closed due to the COVID-19 um, situation, so there are no updates on cases that are currently in court, um, but if you have any questions or concerns about new cases, anything that might need attention from code compliance, you can reach out to him and we will put his email address on our website as well. Um, or you can just call 311 to file any kind of issues that you might be having with code compliance. Um, We're going to start doing a probably monthly, possibly bi-monthly member spotlight. And I wanted to bring attention to our first member spotlight who is Victoria Archibald. Um, she is a business member of the Windsor Forest Community Association. She's a local realtor here in town, and um, she's obviously a Windsor Forest resident. And Victoria is actually the one who had the brainchild for the food trucks um, that we've been able to bring to the neighborhood. She saw that there were other neighborhoods in the city of Savannah that were bringing in food trucks and thought, Windsor Forest has you know, 25, um, 100 residents or more, we can certainly get food trucks out to this part of the city. So she is the one that really got that started for us. She is still hosting food trucks at her house. And then we've also um, switched to two other locations. We're doing food trucks at the city lot at the intersection of Windsor Road and Largo. And then we're also doing them at St. George Episcopal Church, which is where the Windsor Forest Community Association typically has our bi-monthly meeting. So the church has been kind enough to donate their parking lot as well as space for the food trucks to come there. So a big thank you to Victoria. She's a very active member of the neighborhood of our community association. We are so grateful for everything that she does and we are certainly grateful for all of the work that she did initially to get food trucks here mm -hmm. to Windsor Forest. Um, so to piggyback on that, I hope that everybody has had the chance to follow the Windsor Forest food truck Facebook page. Um, that is being handled, managed by the Windsor Forest Community Association. Um, so we are I want to point out Katie Williams. She has, um, I guess we're going to call her our food truck chairman, <laughs> um, chairwoman. She has been the one who's responsible for reaching out to the food trucks, getting them scheduled. Whenever the food trucks do provide menus, she's the one that's posting those on the food truck Facebook page so that everybody can kind of see what is available for dinner. Um, so if you are not liking the Facebook page, please do so. We are going to continue having food trucks through the month of May. Um, hopefully, as long as this, you know, shelter in place continues to happen, we will be able to have food trucks bringing us interesting and new dinner options here to the neighborhood. And then once things do go back to some kind of sense of normalcy, we are hoping to continue to have food trucks come out to the neighborhood, probably not quite as often as we are having now. But, um, you know, we can maybe do once every couple of weeks, once a month, just to have that great reason to have neighbors come out and gather together, still while socially distancing responsibly, um, and just have that real sense of community. So follow the Windsor Forest food truck page for all food truck information that is coming to the neighborhood. Um, those who are following the food truck page are probably familiar with the fact that at the food trucks, we've been collecting donations for frontline workers. Um, over the past couple of weeks, we have been able to provide meals for 
Um, we did grocery store workers initially. So we had some various workers from our local Publix and Kroger supermarkets that were able to come out and get a free meal for them and their families, thanks to all the donations that you all have been providing. Last weekend, we were able to take meals to um, the Aldi right around the corner from the neighborhood, as well as the CVS and Walgreens at the entrance of, of Largo. So the staff there was incredibly appreciative and you know, we could not do this. We could not represent Windsor Forest as well as we've been able to without everybody's extreme generosity. So thank you so much to everybody who's been, been donating to that cause. Just so you know, we have raised about $670 in the past, I'd say month and a half since we've been doing that. So thank you. It's a, it's a tremendous amount of money and we've been able to feed probably, I think it's been close to 30 people or so with that. The funds are still coming in. We still have money in the account. We've only spent about $370 worth of it. Um, and that can be seen on our financial report as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Katie, can, I'm so, sorry, can I interrupt? We sure. are now live. I'd like to apologize for everybody that's watching on Facebook for the delay. It will be recorded and posted later, so you'll be able to see anything that you might have missed. But you did not miss our elected officials, so don't worry. And you may comment, if you're an attendee, you may comment in um, the chat box or question and answer. And if you're on Facebook, if you have questions as things go along, we'll be watching that and we'll, we can comment there as well. So I apologize, technology has been sorted out. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think we can all relate to technology making our, our lives a little more difficult even than they already are on a day-to-day -day basis. So, um, so just so I understand, so this has been recorded this whole time and we'll post the Zoom recording of it on our Facebook page. And then they can also be watching live now with Facebook. And on our website. It'll and on our website, awesome. perfect. Mm -hmm. Excellent, all right. Well, for people following on Facebook, just to catch you up, we are to item eight on our agenda. So we were just talking about the essential staff donations that we've been collecting at the Windsor Forest food trucks um, over the past couple of weeks and how many meals we've been able to provide so far for that. So with your generosity, we've raised about $670. We spent about $370 on meals so far. So the money's still coming in. We plan on still providing those meals as long as we can. Um, and we are very, again, very, very grateful for everyone's extreme generosity. Um, next item, we have got an upcoming event that the Windsor Forest Community Association is going to do. We figured since everybody was kind of stuck at home, we would provide a Saturday evening activity. So we are going to be playing bingo this Saturday at 8 p.m. There is an event on our Facebook page for it, so you can look up more information there. We'll be sending out, a, uh, I believe, a Zoom link for that. Um, so that you can actively see your neighbors and friends as we are playing bingo together. We will have prizes for winners. So we encourage everybody who is home and looking for something to do on Saturday night to join us for bingo. And again, you can go to our Facebook page or our website for information on that. Um, I also wanted to touch upon our COVID response team. So at the very beginning, back in March, when we you know, we're just kind of getting into all of this. Um, we sent out um, a request to all of our neighbors here in Windsor Forest asking anybody who wanted to help their neighbors during this challenging time, or if there were any neighbors that needed help during this challenging time. So we got overwhelming response for people who were willing to help. Um, what we did not get much response for was people who needed help. So I just wanted to put that out there again, now that we're a couple months into this, you know, Georgia may be opening back up, but I think, you know, we here in Savannah very much want to stay safe, stay home, follow the science that's behind all of this. Um, so, you know, you might have been okay at the beginning of all of this, but now that we're a few months in, if you're finding that you do need some help with anything, please reach out to us. You can email us, you can uh, Facebook message us, you can email us through our website, ourwindsorforest.com. Um, and please know that you have got a huge support system here in the neighborhood. You have neighbors that are 
wanting to help, that can help. So if you need any kind of assistance, please reach out to us and we will certainly be able to, I would say with almost 100% certainty, find somebody that can assist you in whatever manner you may need. Um, so it's a resource that we were really, really excited to have so many people volunteer to help with, but a resource that we haven't really been able to use so far yet. So please know that that is available for you. Um, also, this week is National Police Week. So I would encourage everybody to take a moment to reflect, honor, and celebrate all of the brave men and women who serve on our police force, especially the amazing um, precinct that we have out here on the south side who are always responding to the needs of Windsor Forest and very much keeping Windsor Forest safe. So we have, um, with the food trucks, we have been trying to find different groupings of, of essential workers, of frontline workers that we can provide meals for. So we are hoping that in the coming week, we can use some of the donations that we received at the food trucks to provide some meals for our neighborhood police officers um, in recognition of them and as a thank you for National Police Week. Um, and just to go back on that, um, we do have on our website as well a Google document that you can actually nominate frontline workers, first responders, um, essential personnel. If you would like to nominate somebody to receive a free meal at the food trucks, the nomination form for that is on our website as well. Um, that, I believe, is almost all of the Windsor Forest Community Association news I have. Um, I do not see any questions here on the Zoom call. Kate, have you received any questions so far on the Facebook page? No questions yet. I bet they're waiting for Alderman Purdy. All right, wonderful. Well, before I introduce Alderman Purdy, I just wanted to um, let you know that I was on a neighborhood leadership Zoom call last night with Mayor Johnson. Um, and we had the opportunity to ask questions about what was happening with the city and how the city was responding to all of the COVID-19 scenarios. Um, so it was very informative. I know that Alderman Purti is going to have much more uh, confirmed information than Mayor Johnson was able to give us last night. Um, but hopefully this week, um, people have started seeing their yard waste being picked up. Um, I know that it was picked up in my area on Monday, but I've heard people today getting their yard debris picked up. So that is definitely happening. Um, it was promised and it has been delivered. So we just had to be patient. But um, uh, Mayor Johnson did say that hopefully towards the end of May, we are going to be resuming a more regulated yard debris and recycling pickup um, schedule. So we've hopefully gotten, we've hopefully endured um, the hardest part of it. And as we start getting back to that sense of normalcy, um, those sanitation services will be resuming again. But that is really all I have for now. So I would like to introduce Alderman Purti. Thank you so much for being on this call with us. And I will let you take it away to inform us of everything that you know. And then if anybody does have any questions, again, please feel free to write those in on Facebook. We are monitoring that as well as on this Zoom call. We can take questions here for the aldermen, so. All right, good evening. Thanks you all for having me. A um, Couple things I'll touch on uh, first and, and foremost, uh, the COVID response. The city has been working diligently with, with a lot of uh, public health officials and a lot of our neighborhood associations to um, kind of convey this information out there. I've been doing some Facebook live videos uh, usually once a week. The next one will be this Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, that's Friday the 15th of May at 7 p.m. Uh, for Facebook Live. And some of the stuff I talk about here, we'll, I'll also provide that information out there. Um, Mayor Johnson has been real big on follow the science. And that's, that's what we need to be doing. And we want to try to um, not only get that science, get that information, that data, collect it, but try to establish a a safe reopening for the city. Um, we, we still don't know yet how this pandemic is going to play out. Um, I can tell you that in the state, uh, 
the seven o'clock numbers have not come out yet, but there have been uh, more tests and a lot more tests means that we're gonna see a lot more cases. So it's not that the virus is spreading at a rate that, that has, you know, that's been really bad, um, but it's just that more people are being tested so the numbers are going to be a little bit higher. Currently, as of noon today, we had roughly 274,000 um, folks that were tested. Uh, in the state, we've had roughly 35,000 or so cases as of noon today. Uh, in Chatham County, we're, we're averaging uh, 333 cases um, as of noon today, uh, 14 deaths in the county, 84 people hospitalized. We are very, very fortunate to uh, have these low numbers. I consider them low numbers if you look at the cities in other major metropolitan areas and what they're dealing with. Uh, some of the things that we're telling folks uh, is to practice social distancing and social distancing is key. Uh, if you're gonna be in a building going shopping, that sort of thing, if you're gonna be in, in Publix uh, or stopping by McDonald's and you have to run inside, please please wear a mask. Uh, Mayor Johnson is, is coming up with a, um, I'm trying to remember the program, Safe Savannah program. So the Safe Savannah Pledge, excuse me, the Safe Savannah Pledge is, is a program that the mayor with his networks uh, is putting together to partner with businesses uh, so that we can um, provide the, the safest environment for our constituents and community out there. So we, there, there's a lot more testing going on. Um, again, we try to practice that social distancing, keep, keep numbers, um, in parties below 10 if you can uh, that's that's the key the key to this thing is social distancing until we get through this this may be the new normal for a while and so we just don't know how long this is going to take uh, again we are relying on our public health officials um, some of our partners out there in the medical community and uh, our local folks here so yard waste and recycling has been a hot topic lately um, that's been uh, i've probably received from last weekend uh, probably till today, actually over 125 calls. And they are all in reference to recycling and in reference to the yard waste. The yard waste, um, you know, they put it on a schedule to start the 27th of April. And here we are now the 13th of May and we're still getting yard waste collected. They estimated uh, 500 tons at the beginning of this uh, one time pickup and we are pushing three times that limit right now. So. We're at, uh, I think, 150, uh, yeah, 150, 150 or something like that. So it, it, it's a lot, but it, either way, it's three times more than what they estimated. Uh, the, the best practice that uh, the city manager, Pat Monahan and I have discussed is for the uh, numbers in the COVID to either plateau or go down. And that is um, five, when it gets below that five case per seven day period, we're hoping uh, that we can get some normalcy back in city operations. As far as the uh, sanitation crews, the yard waste recycling crews, we are looking at the beginning of June. We were looking initially at the end of May. We are looking more like the first, second week of June. So that's when, when we're gonna start putting some safeguards in. We wanna make sure that there's plenty of, of personal protective equipment for our city staff. We wanna make sure that we keep those folks safe. Uh, we wanna make sure that, that they are continuing to do the good job that they do. Uh, the police department has has done an outstanding job of uh, wearing their personal protective equipment and trying to enforce what they can enforce during this time. A lot of folks were confused about what the city and what the police department could do versus what the governor's order was and uh, what we were allotted to do. So basically the governor's order overrode anything that the city wanted to put in place and he put specific enforcement um, rules behind that. So only certain uh, agencies could could enforce these laws. So at this point, uh, with the relaxed, um, I guess, procedures and policies that the governor is, is put in place, we're starting to see more businesses open up. There's still some businesses on the south side, uh, bars, nightclubs, that sort of thing that are not going to be open uh, per the governor's order. We are still waiting to, to see how this thing plays out. Um, Windsor Forest Golden Age Center, that has been a huge topic for a lot of senior citizens uh, and a lot of youth around the area. Uh, a lot of people were under the assumption that at, at the end of this year, we were going to lose that facility. And I verified through the um, office that we are holding on to that facility at least until May of 2022. So we have a couple years um, 
of that facility left where we can we can still utilize it as the BOE is allowing us to. So we had a good intergovernmental agreement, uh, which brings me to uh, looking for another facility. And I, I know before I talked about the old Kroger, we're still looking at that. Uh, the coronavirus has put kind of a uh, put the brakes on a lot of different a lot of different um, projects that we are working on, but. Uh, we're still moving forward with it. We're, we're looking at doing what we can um, to try to make that a reality. So that's going to be a, if it plays out, it will be a senior center, a youth center, a multi-age, multicultural center that we have on the south side. And it's not only going, it's going to be housed in the sixth district, but it's going to benefit the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth districts. So that's, that's a huge benefit, something that we've never had on this side of the city before. And we're, we're going to try to make that a reality. Uh, one, it's going to provide better police services for our area here. Uh, it's going to provide an area where folks can go pay water bills if they've got questions about city uh, city items. I'm going to try to put a satellite office for myself out of there so uh, people can come in, meet if they have questions. Right now, it's usually by cell phone, <laughs> so we'll, we'll try to get we'll try to get some stability over here on the uh, in the sixth district. Uh, still looking at some SPLOS projects. That's one of them, the Southside Community Center. I'm looking at trying to get more lights put in Windsor Park. Uh, I know that was a, an issue for a lot of folks. They didn't feel safe. There was a lot of um, dark areas over in Windsor Park. We're looking at lighting projects, sidewalks. Uh, talked to Captain Halford with the Southside Precinct. A uh, great group of police officers in Savannah that service the Southside. And those folks run calls. They stay busy day in, day out and all night long, and they do a good job of patrolling the areas, and I've, I've brought that up to Captain Hulford's attention, and she has been very diligent on making sure that, that we have some, some good security when it comes to um, officers being posted in those areas and, and patrolling through there. Um, some more things uh, that we were looking at, uh, Alderwoman Brian and myself are now sit on the uh, Homeless Authority, um, so we're, we're excited to sit on that board, and one of our big initiatives was to try to tackle the homeless uh, pandemic that has reached our area. It has been exacerbated by the COVID-19 situation. Uh, there are some folks that, that now have been out of a job and are living out of parking lots and their cars, whole entire families. So it's not just the folks that you see panhandling on the side of the road. There are actually families living in cars uh, in the Savannah Mall parking lot and the Walmart parking lot. We're trying to help those individuals and, and trying to get some stability in their life and trying to provide them with resources. So Alderwoman Brian and I have worked together and we've identified a piece of property for the city. Uh, that is the city's property towards downtown. Um, we are clearing that property currently and we are going to provide a, um, a, a camp, if you will, uh, we're going to try to look at something long term for homeless folks. My goal is to look at a facility that will at least house 200 people. Uh, we've had a lot of donations of tents. We've had donations of food. We want a central point where folks can go that need the help and be able to shower, be able to get water, the basic necessities. Um, and this is going to be a well regulated area. No drugs, no alcohol, that sort of thing. So we, we are going to do the best job that we can. Uh, I know a lot of folks have called about the homeless folks and, um, you know, there are a few that, that are um, taking advantage of the system, but the vast majority of the folks that we see out there are indeed homeless and they are in a position where they, they just, they can't survive. And we're trying to provide the resources. Um, you know, they are our citizens of our community. So as we move forward, we're going to to try and um, provide those resources the best we can at a minimal cost. And so far, a lot of stuff's been donated. We haven't had to come up with much cost for anything. So if we can, if we can swing it and make it work, I think that's gonna benefit everybody in this situation. Um, tomorrow, we have a city council meeting. Our workshop starts at 10, the city council meeting starts at two. It's going to be um, streamed live on the City of Savannah government channel, as well as Facebook, various media outlets. Uh, one item that you'll see is the, um, and we've had a big issue with this, the traffic calming. Uh, situations throughout the community, especially throughout District 6. There's a lot of areas in Windsor Forest and Coffee Bluff and in the Wilshire area that are used as cut-throughs for folks to drive their cars. And of course, these are neighborhoods where we have kids playing. There are people out walking, riding bikes, walking dogs. Uh, so you're going to see on that agenda 
a, uh, a name, Mason Sheffield, who I have um, reached out to, who's applied for the Traffic Calming Committee. I'm going to nominate his name and he will be our District 6 representative for the Traffic Calming Committee. So uh, my goal is to work with him and have him work with a group of folks throughout the city to identify these areas that, that need special attention. And there's going to be lots of those areas. So uh, I've got a tough job ahead of me. He's got a tough job. I'm glad he volunteered. Um, so that's that's going to be helpful for us. Uh, a couple of small things, and then that's all I've got. Um, I will be reaching out to all of the neighborhood presidents for a Zoom meeting. Mayor Van Johnson did that uh, with y'all already. And I'll be doing that to give some more specific information and ask uh, for specific needs in the district and the area. Uh, another issues, please reach out to the Savannah Police Department. Um, I will tell you that uh, Officer Hurd, who is our neighborhood police officer, she is she is wonderful. She knows a lot of people in the area. This this is this is her baby. This is this is her area. So she is she's absolutely wonderful with it. Um, she's been she's been so helpful in. Uh, dealing with the homeless population and dealing with with district problems that we have she knows everybody so she is a great resource to utilize uh, if you have issues please feel free to reach out to her or any of the savannah police department officers um, captain halford is your precinct commander and uh i cannot urge people enough vote 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 okay we have an, an election coming up i i did an absentee ballot i sent mine in uh, it's very easy if you haven't done so. Um, I know people are, are still very wary on going out in public and, and standing in lines. Uh, there's going to be some, I'm sure there's going to be some workarounds for when we reach that, that point where we need to go out and stand in lines to vote. But for right now, uh, absentee ballots, you don't have to be disabled to get them. You don't have to be homebound to get them. Anybody can get an absentee ballot. So I urge folks to do that if you haven't already. Uh, one other thing on a personal level, uh, many of you know uh, Joanne from uh, the 6th District, Miss Apollo. She is, she's a wonderful person that lives over on Largo Drive. Uh, I'm sorry to see that her mother just passed away this morning. Uh, her mother just celebrated her 100th birthday, and Joanne's been very active in the 6th District and community, so we send our thoughts and prayers to her and her family uh, during this time. Uh, but that's all I have on, a, on another personal level. Just everybody, please you know, reach out to one another. If, if you have concerns, get a hold of your neighbors. We're just phone calls away. I'm just a phone call away. If you have questions, uh, I, I know at times uh, people will call me and they'll leave a voicemail. Within about an hour or so, I usually call back. I'm good at texting or send me an email. Um, I will do the best I can for you. And if there's anything you need, just please feel free to reach out. All right, great. Thank you so much, Alderman Perti. We really, really appreciate you taking the time. Um, we appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely, and thank such you. Such a wonderful download. Um, so really, um, I think we didn't get many questions on Facebook. Um, people were excited to hear about the community center. Um, and also somebody commented, and I'm also very happy to hear that we've got a traffic calming representative now from the 6th district. So that's wonderful news. Um, Absolutely. And truly, that is all we have today. Um, we were hoping to have Commissioner Jones on tonight as well. He was unable to join us, unfortunately. But if people have any questions for Commissioner Jones, you can certainly email those to um, our Windsor Forest, um, and we can pass those along to him or reach out to his um, commissioner email as well. So. Um, Yes, that that is all I have. So I really appreciate. Uh, we have a food truck tonight, so hopefully everybody will come out to the food truck that's there we go. and Windsor Road. Um, that's Pie Society is tonight, and we're also thank you so much to Marsha Lieberman, who has gotten us um, some access to some cloth masks. So we know that some people have said they've had trouble purchasing masks, or maybe you're a little um, weary of doing it online. We are selling them at the food truck tonight. So if you're interested in purchasing a mask, you can do so there. Excellent, thank you so much, Kate. So yes, it's we're finishing a little early than our uh, hour long call, but it is dinner time. So head on over to Windsor, Windsor and Largo for some pie society tonight. 
purchase your masks if you have not been able to find them elsewhere. Um, we will be collecting donations again this evening for those frontline workers. So if you are so inclined, certainly feel free to donate um, for meals that we can provide in the future. And thank you. Thank you for turning, tuning in. Thank you for being part of this community. Um, we appreciate everybody's involvement, everybody's generosity, everybody's love and support during this difficult time. Again, if there's anything that we can help you with, any support that you may need, please feel free to reach out to us. Do you have a question? There's a question from the wife. What is the question? What is the wife saying? Um, we were thinking that maybe uh, Commissioner Jones might be getting on. Is he going to be jumping on the call here or? Maybe another time might be better. Sorry. Thank you, Alderman Purdy. We really yes. appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. We do appreciate your time and all of your um, and all of your wonderful information that you were able Absolutely. to share with us. And Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. So Saturday night, if you want to have a fun session where nobody's asking anything of you, we love yes. it. Yes. Please join us for bingo. <laughs> And everybody yes. else, please join us for bingo. Um, and again, if you need help, we are here. We, you have neighbors that want to help you. So please uh, just reach out to us and we can get you that assistance. And I think with that, we're going to, we're going to call it a night. So I officially uh, adjourn this meeting. Thank you again for joining us. Um, and we look forward to seeing you all very, very soon. Please stay well. All right, thank you.